Hello guys and welcome back. In this video I want to talk to you about jaw lines and having a good solid jaw line. Now this uh, this video came about with a bit of a story. I'll go into it. I'll do it quickly. Um, I've been very much focusing on success for a long time as you guys know and I've decided recently to kind of get back on the aesthetic stuff. Maybe, you know, after lockdown's over, maybe improve my lifestyle a little bit. It adds some nice things to my life like get in shape, go on holiday, buy some cars, houses, etc. I thought it would be a good idea to do um to focus on the jawline stuff again. So I've been doing orthotropics as you guys know for a good few years now. But one thing that I realized is that my face started to look in my opinion once I shaved off my beard and that's why I do it just to do a quick update. My face started to look a little bit bulbous. And what I mean by that is it was rounded around here. It looked as though everything had gone forward, exactly as Orthotropics, Mike Mew, whatever it might be, had suggested. And this was big, but everything had pushed forward and it just felt as though it was like at a point. Like everything was pointing inwards. Sorry. Everything was pointed inwards towards the middle, like that. And it was almost like more like a, like a snout than a face. And I've been trying to figure out for so long what the hell's happened. And um, one of the First Man community members actually sent me... Uh, oh yeah, forgot to say. I, I hope you like it, guys. I thought we're all trying to be kings, so it makes sense, right? It's the First Man one. I want to put the gorilla's face actually on there, but maybe that'll come later. Um, but one of the First Man community members sent me a video by this guy called Jeff Logan. Now, Jeff is a bit of a fitness guy. He's in great shape, real handsome guy. He's, he's gone from having a terrible life to one of the best lives out there. So one of the community members sent it to me and said, hey, have you seen this guy? He's kind of done what you spoke about. So I checked out his video. It was really interesting, loved it, really motivational. I love stuff like that. And then just below, I saw one of his other videos. And it was about Jawline, uh, jawline of the Gods, which I'll bring up on screen now. So I checked that video out and I had a little look. And um, what he's talking about is uh, facial exercises, which is nothing new. I used to do them before I knew about orthotropics. It was something that I always did anyway. But once I found orthotropics, I kind of pushed them to the wayside because I was like, do they even work as well as orthotropics? Here's the thing though, guys, right? People who are doing facial exercises are usually doing this. Raising their eyebrows, you know, doing, like making a circle with their heads. And I just think all of that stuff is just kind of silly. I don't think it's going to work. I sat down with Mike Mew for four hours during a documentary. We had a giant discussion about orthotropics, facial exercises, everything you can imagine, okay? One of the things that stuck with me regarding everything that he does, but especially with facial exercises, is that he said muscles influence bone posture. That's what they do. As the bone remodifies, or also remodels, and it does that through calcification, it's going to either lengthen, change its shape, shorten, whatever it might be, all right? But your bones are constantly remodeling. They do it less when you get older, but they're constantly remodeling. So with that knowledge at hand, he said to me that if you build up your jaw muscle here, you're naturally going to have a forward, a more forward, um, forward jawline, okay? And your maxilla bone, because your mouth's going to be closed a lot more often, your maxilla is going to be higher because another muscle, the tongue, is going to be pushed on the palate, the roof of the mouth, and it's going to push that bone forward, upwards and forward. You're going to have higher cheekbones, etc. He showed me all of this. Once a muscle gets strong and it can hold a certain position, it's then going to act on those bones, it's going to influence them, and they're going to change their natural shape, their posture, whatever, and over time, you're going to get results. After watching Jeff's video, what Jeff was doing is he was doing a lot of exercises that were focused on the neck. He was talking about the jawline, but he was exercising the neck muscles. And uh, the results that he's had are unbelievable. And I'll show you his exercises um, in, a, in a bit. I just need to show you something first. But I started thinking, when somebody, for example, let's put my tea down. For example, somebody has a massive chest, okay? They go in the gym every day, they train chest. We've all seen a guy like that, but they never train their back. And then what happens is they get that rounded shoulder posture where everything's leaning forward and they just look kind of silly, okay? I believe that, that is happening with the majority of guys' jawlines around about here. I believe that everybody is working the muscles from here upwards. 
but nobody is working what they call down here, well, the neck muscles around here, there's, there's multiple triangles that the neck muscles are split into. And under here is called the submental space, right under here. Probably the most important part, okay, the submental space. And then on your neck, it's all split into triangles, like I said. Guys, you would not believe how many muscles there are in the neck. I'm going to show you in a minute. I'm going to move over to the screen. We're going to show, I'm going to show you all some diagrams. We're going to swap over. But around here, the submental and the triangles around here, there's a ton of muscles, like I said. And I believe where people aren't, people don't have strong muscles around this area. People might have strong muscles here from chewing. This was my problem. I chewed mastic gum for years, eight hours a day, four hours a day, whatever it might be. And I feel as though my face became a little bit lopsided or a bit weird because it was stronger up here than it was down here in the submental and in the neck region. And I feel like it's caused an imbalance. As I said, weak back muscles, strong chest muscles, you get that kind of rounded forward leaning posture. It doesn't look good. Well, I think most people have got strong back neck muscles and I, I would honestly say it's the same with glutes, okay? Most people have weak glutes and weak, weak hamstrings in this era, which has caused a ton of knee and back pain. I honestly think 95% of people have weak front neck muscles and weak submental muscles around here. And when you see the diagrams, you'll understand why and how many muscles there are around that area. But here, I believe we have strong back and neck muscles. Everybody has really strong ones, right? And I believe it's from looking down at your phone. I believe it's sitting at a screen and kind of like that. And do this little test for me, guys. I'll do it with you right now, okay? Put your neck up in the air like this, right? And just kind of put your hand under here and just kind of feel the muscles under here. They're tensed, okay? They're pretty tensed. Now slowly bring your neck down as if you're looking at a computer screen. Can you feel them soften up? They're a lot looser. Now look down at a mobile phone. Guys, those muscles under here become so loose and relaxed that they're not under tension anymore. And if anybody's done any physical education um, kind of qualifications, you'll know that there's two different, but there's antagonistic pairs when it comes to muscles. So if I stretch my arm out like that, my triceps working. If I bring it in, my tricep relaxes, my bicep works, vice versa. My triceps now working, my bicep isn't. They call that antagonistic pairs, and I think it's extension and... I think it's flexion. So right now my biceps in flexion, my triceps in extension, and then vice versa. I believe, right? But either way, if I've got the words wrong, the process is the same. They definitely do work in antagonistic pairs. This is happening around here, right? So it's very rare that we're walking upright with a strong posture. You know, we're not on the Serengeti anymore. We're not looking out across the Sahara Desert. We're not hunting for animals. Most of the shit we do in this era is in front of us. Mobile phones, computer screens. These muscles here, we're looking down a lot. Tall guys will know this. If I walk around the home, if I walk around the world, not literally, but if I walk around, everything is at a lower level. I'm spending the majority of my day looking down at a keyboard, looking down at my phone. Most people are shorter than me. I'm looking down to talk to them. When I used to walk my dog, I was looking down to look at my dog. When you're turning on light switches, they're slightly down. These muscles under here, you would not believe how little they get used. There's a whole crop of them under here and they don't get used. And I believe that they are constantly in, like I said, flexion. They're not in extension. They're not being used. They're not being worked. They're not being worked half as much, if not even a tenth as much as these muscles back here. Because think about it. If you're leaning forward all day, these muscles are holding you up. You know, if these muscles didn't exist, your head would just flop and fall forward. These muscles under here are not being worked all day. Because like I said, once you get to that point, they're not being worked. So these are becoming weaker. It's giving people a forward head posture. And it's not propping up that jawline. And it's giving you stronger muscles back here. And it's just making everything out of sync. And I believe by building up these too much, and I've obviously got big muscles back here because I lift weights. I believe under here, I was very, very weak. And after seeing Jeff's video and the results he got, he didn't come to that conclusion. He was actually training the whole face, but a lot of them were the neck muscles. He didn't come to that conclusion, but I truly believe that's what he stumbled on. And let's go over to the screen, guys, because I want to show you this diagram, okay? All right, guys, so I got an image for you here. Just look at the number of muscles that are in the neck, okay? So what we've got here 
is probably in reality we've got one bone here we've got two bones here we've got three bones here but in the actual actual neck itself okay so if you're doing orthotropics this jawline bone is mandible this should be forward anyway okay you're going to get some growth we've got a second bone here the windpipe we've got this bone here the hyoid bone that's a tiny bone okay that's kind of just like a pincer just keeping everything together but we can see here how many muscles there actually are and you've got to remember as well, I, I believe what they're showing us here is one muscle on each side. Because I, I can't believe that this one muscle wouldn't also exist on this side. So all the muscles that you are seeing here are probably half as many as there actually are. So add an extra one, replicate this one over here, replicate this one over here, have another one right next to this one, have this muscle over here. You know, we've got so many, basically our necks and our submental area, the area of under here, this triangle, all of this is muscle. It's complete muscle, okay? So when people say, oh, I, I just have a natural double chin or it's just body fat or it's just this, it's just that. Guys, it's mainly just muscle. So I would, I would deem from this that the majority of double chins or weak jaw lines come from weak muscles under here, which can't hold up the posture properly, which is affecting this jaw line from growing outwards and also an effect that I'll show you guys in a minute, which we'll get to. But this is staggering. I, I didn't realize that there were so little bones and so many muscles in this area. Now, we'll get onto body fat in a minute as well, but I just want to show you a few more pictures. That was the streaming platform, if anybody wants to have a look. Pretty cool, coming soon. Okay, so we see this muscle here. We've got, it's literally sheets, sheets of muscle. So we've got muscle here, we've got muscle here, we've got these triangles, we've got muscle under here, right under the chin, which would push that forward. We've got, see this area here, so many people have this sloping posture here where it slopes down. I have this a bit, where it slopes down. Now, if all these muscles were stronger and tighter, they would get sucked up that way. That's what they would do. They would influence the posture of the bone, they would get the hyoid bone up. The muscle strength under here for the majority of us is, is terrible, to be honest. Now let's look at a few of these pictures. So you look at this guy here, okay? These neck muscles could usually be, if they were weak, then they would be further down here and this would end up stretching further up the mandible. So because they're tight, the hyoid bone has been tucked up here. All of this is tight under this submental zone. Like guys, under here is all muscle. There's no other explanation for this. All muscle under here, it's tight, it's solid. That's why he's got the impression of a solid jawline. Okay, this area here, some more triangles here, muscle sheets, muscle triangles. If he toned them up even more, I'm sure this would tuck up even more and give him an, a, a nice little edge, a nice little curve around his jawline. Because everyone always says, if you want a good jaw, you train your jaw muscles, which I've said, okay? You train these, pushes everything up, maxilla bone, this goes forward, this comes out and follows. Well, I'm truly believing now that there's a much bigger part to this, and I believe it comes from these weak neck muscles. You can actually see his head posture goes forward a slight bit. If this guy were to train his neck muscles around this area a lot more, I believe he would be even better looking than he is here. Let's look at someone else. Okay, so we see with this guy, very, very strong neck muscles. Okay, so we've got the windpipe here, the Adam's apple. Everything is very tight. So this submental zone is extremely tight. All these muscles are very toned, they're solid. If we look under here, this is solid, it's tucked up, everything is tight, it's tight around here again, like I said, and everything is strong. And this neck is, look at the size of his head compared to his neck. That doesn't mean he's got a weak neck, it just means that it's small because the muscles are tight, everything's been tucked in around here, it gives the impression. He might actually have a big neck, but it gives the impression that it's a small neck. And like I said, this submental zone, nobody works on it. It'll all become apparent when I show you some images in a minute of the other side of the coin with some of the other people. So this is Jeff Logan, for anybody who was, who was interested. And he's actually lifting his head up here, but the submental zone is solid, but he's actually lifting his head up here. So what we've got is this area around here looking as though it's connected to the jaw, which it still looks good because he's got a solid jawline. But if we were to remove this section here, his jawline would look even more dramatic, which it does in other pictures. Here's another example. We've got Leonardo DiCaprio, who we all know isn't 
you know, Mr. Olympia. He's got very high body fat, yet his submental zone is solid. So that has nothing to do with body fat there. It, it does, don't get me wrong, it does help. You lose body fat. Um, but this submental zone is toned. There's plenty of fat guys with good jaw lines. There's plenty of skinny guy, guys with floppy jaw lines. And body fat will help to reveal the outline a lot more. And it will definitely be an additional step, which we'll explain at the end. But this submental zone is solid. And if he were to train up his neck and strengthen these front or neck muscles, I'm sure this would look even more exaggerated. And this would get pushed out along with a strong jaw muscle and the maxilla being pushed up with these cheekbones. Everything would be on the move forward together. Let's take a look at this one. Jason Statham. Look at this. Look at that for a jawline, guys. It's almost like a surfboard. So this submental zone is solid as a rock. That's a fantastic muscle tone there. It's like a sheet of muscle. You know, everything is tight all around here. And yes, his bone, his mandible bone is, you know, it's pretty perfect here. It grows outwards, it's pushed forward. I believe, though, that that has happened from having such strong, don't get me wrong, he's got strong jaw muscles here. He's pushed everything upwards and forwards with his tongue and his maxilla. And, uh... The one thing that I think people miss, though, is his neck muscles under here. I think they're extremely toned and strong. I think his posture is good. And that has allowed all of this to work together and push this out from the bottom, especially, which everybody misses. Now, let's look at some other pictures, okay? Now, this is Jeremy Meeks, the, the model, the hot felon that all the girls went crazy over. He's got ridiculously high cheekbones. He's got the hollow jaw. His jaw here actually pops out. But as we can see, look, he's actually got good, pretty good head posture here, guys. There's nothing wrong with what he's doing. But as we can see, he actually has this bulbous type thing that a lot of guys have. And look, there's no difference, okay? So we've got the windpipe here, the Adam's apple area, normal neck, good posture, good head shape. Everything's in order, maxilla forward, etc. Now, if we draw a line down from his nose, we can see his jawline doesn't actually complete. His jawline should be about here. Okay, that's his natural position, according to the rest of his face. Everything above the submental zone is strong. So the jawline, the cheekbones, the maxilla positioning is forward. That's why he's such a handsome guy. But this jaw, this mandible will re is refusing to come forward, which is exactly what's happened with me, is I've become bulbous up in these areas, I believe. It's, I've improved it a lot now because I've been doing this for like three weeks. But when I took my beard off, I was quite surprised. But this is refusing to come forward, I believe, because of these weak muscles under his jawline. I believe everything above it is pretty much perfection. He's done a fantastic job. If you see this guy front on, he looks great. But everything below this jawline, the mandible, is weak. These triangles that are split into triangles on the neck, the submental zone, they're all weak. That's why he's got this kind of puffy double chin looking thing. And his jawline isn't as solid as it can be. However, if we look at pictures of Jeremy Meek now, his jawline is solid. So I believe that the modeling company's got a hold of him and they've shown him some jawline exercises. Um, I don't think he's had surgery. I think they've shown him some neck exercises and uh, I think they've brought everything together. I think that's what they're doing. I think they know that everything else is perfect. They've just tightened this up. And if you see him now, I believe he's better looking than he was when all the girls were going crazy. Now this guy here, okay? This is from a website where this guy's actually had jawline surgery. Right, so we can clearly see this jawline is way better, okay? But you would know that this was from surgery. I, I, I would probably know that this was surgery because it just doesn't match the rest of his face. And I'll tell you what's funny here, guys. Just to really prove my point, if anybody's not on board with the kind of back and chest kind of analogies that I use, which I think explains pretty much everything. But if you're not on board with it yet, this guy's got no jawline. And this area here, the submental zone is really floppy looks like a turkey's neck okay he's had surgery his jawline is immaculate you know very strong jawline very noticeable i know he's got a beard on it but it is a lot stronger but guess what guys this has not changed this has barely changed this is exactly the same as it was earlier i honestly i think if you drew a line it would be pretty much the exact same line this area hasn't changed because it's like i said a sheet of muscle it's a sheet of neck muscles under here broken into triangles and these muscles, unless he gets them, unless he gets them pinned up there with surgery, I'm not sure how you would do that. But these are remaining because he has weak frontal neck muscles. That's exactly why. Like this guy has had jaw surgery and he still looks pretty much the same, just a bigger mandible. 
he could have got probably the same effects if he had just trained these neck muscles, which would have brought all of this forward as long as he was also doing orthotropics, which would have pushed all of this forward and strengthened his jaw muscle. So here's another guy. Okay, so this is another surgery. Now, it looks like he's lost weight too, but they've given him more of a jawline. He looks a little bit better, well, a lot better, to be honest, but he still has this area under here. Now, like I said, he's lost weight, and it's gone from this to this, okay, because he's lost fat. But here's, here's why body fat is just one part of it, guys, is that this bulbous bit here has now just become pretty much a flat curve. And that's because he's lost body fat. If he lost a little bit more, it might be tucked up here, but he would still have this line. He would still have this line coming off of here and drooping down. Ideally, you want nothing. You want it to just be straight jawline and then connect into neck. Maybe not that far in, but jawline, neck. That's what all the most attractive people have. And then a solid jawline in here and this outer neck. So this is what people forget about a neck is it's a cylinder and it's shape. So these outer muscles, when they tighten up, they actually tuck inwards and they give a better impression here of a more solid mandible because they're in further than the mandible is. Even if your neck is here, you know, and it's put in, it attaches here, these side pieces can still be tighter in and give you that impression that the neck is smaller than the head or the jawline, which gives it a more exaggerated effect. But like I said, this guy's barely changed too because in order to tighten this up, that would have to be neck exercises. And a final guy here, the reason I've used this guy is because he actually has pretty low body fat. We can see from everything else. We see that he actually has pretty strong back neck muscles. Um, he, not a bad looking guy, you know, things are moving in the right direction. His jawline is not actually that bad, but we can still see here that he has that effect. I know it's not bad, but he still has that sloping forward posture. And I'm not an expert, but I would definitely say that his back neck muscles are way stronger than the front ones, just based on number one, his posture, but appearance. This looks flabby under here. It doesn't look strong. It doesn't look like a strong neck. I think if he toned all of this up, his head would tilt this way. It would go more upright and he would bring this line in a more upwards position and cut this slope and it would go straight into the jawline, give him a much better impression. All right, guys. So that's what I wanted to show you is the neck muscles. So number one, the first thing I was shocked at is how many neck muscles there actually are. You know, this whole area is neck. Uh, is, sorry, this whole area, of course, is, this whole area is muscles. And the one thing that I found is that that submental area gets, this bit under here, submental, it gets completely disregarded. Now, everybody, everybody doing the exercises, Jeff Logan included, I think they're disregarding this bit up here. I think this is hugely important. But what they are training is everything around here. And what Jeff does have is his neck is pushed right in here and he's got that hyoid bone right up and back. But the most impressive thing I think is that here, so even though his neck stops there and goes in, these side muscles here, he's toned them up so much that they go inwards to a point. I'm pushing that in there. It feels weird, but I'm pushing that in. They go inwards to such a point that his jaw actually comes out and looks even more defined and you can, he gets that cut around here. We saw from the pictures, he has that cut around his jawline and there's some if you search the guy there's some fantastic pictures of him and you can really see his jawline you can watch his video too i recommend you subscribe massively inspirational guy um but now to the jaw exercises that he does and then i'll show you the ones that i, I sat there for like 30 minutes and i just did different movements and exercises and i looked at the science and just tried to find a way to train these muscles what would be the best way to get extension from these muscles and um, first of all, Jeff's one. So what Jeff was doing is he's pushing this chin out. This was his first exercise. So he's kind of doing this. And some of these are going to look pretty silly, guys, but I don't care. Um, you're going to do these on your own, you know, in private. So it doesn't matter. So he's pushing this out. And he was getting a good flex around here. That's what he was saying. And I've been doing this for three weeks. It's pretty good, okay? The next one he's doing is, um, well, this isn't actually for the jawline, but he's pushing his lips together and he's swinging it right to left. So he's doing this. And I actually recommend doing this one. He does about 50 reps, he reckons, okay? But he's doing this one to increase these muscles here. 
around about I think it's the zygoid muscle, the cheekbones. And yeah, it has a great effect. It really does pop. So throw that one in as well, but just for the jawline. The next one that he's doing is this. So he's opening and closing his mouth with resistance. And the great thing about this, you can do 50 reps. You might be able to start really tough. And then because you're controlling the weight, you can kind of ease off a bit, ease off a bit, ease off a bit. So by the time you get to 50, it's kind of like a drop set. So you're going to get fantastic results, okay? Do as many of these as you want without injuring yourself, of course. The other one that he was doing looks a bit weird, but he was doing this. Now, the reason he's doing this is when you poke your tongue out, when you turn your head and you poke your tongue out, you actually get a flex around here. So you get a nice cut around here. And this is where Jeff is really great in his posture, is tucked up in these areas. These areas are really tucked up for Jeff, and it gives him a nice cut around his jawline. The next one that he's doing, another weird one, is he's, he said it's like having a hamburger here, and you go to bite it. And then he said you can do that in reverse as well, looking like T-Pain, so... And what that's doing is exercising these muscles around about here. All right, so um, that's his exercises. I think, did he have any more? Let me think. All right, so that's what Jeff's doing, guys, all right? So you can go and check out his video anyway. I, like I said, I recommend. I hope you subscribe to his channel because he's an inspirational guy. He's perfect for what we're all trying to achieve. But here's some of the ones that I found, okay? I really wanted to get a flex in this submental zone. And one of the stretches that I found was this. I can see myself on camera looking like a fucking freakish fish. But when you do this, guys, when you wrap that, when you tuck those lips in and you stretch here, can you see the amount of neck muscles that are popping out here? And I don't care how weird I look because it gets results, it gets results, but you can really feel it. Your whole neck is being stretched. It's being, it's being toned up. It's being worked. And you can do about 50 reps of that. So the next one that I found, guys, is if you poke your head up and you stick your tongue out like Jeff did, you actually get a stretch in this submental zone under here, okay? So like this. And under here, if you, if you feel under here in the submental zone when you're doing that, it actually tilts the whole jaw forward. And this muscle under here, under the submental zone, actually really tightens up and kind of bends at the top. And I think that would tone that up fantastically. Another one that I found is to bring your chin to your shoulder. Okay, so I found this by looking at extension and flexion. And there's some little muscles under here that only get worked when you do this. There. The lowest point that I was at there, I get a real tight stretch under here. It feels a little bit strange, but I get tight stretch. I'll do it again. It's, it's a real weird feeling. It's almost like it's going to cramp up, but it won't, don't worry. But when you get down to that point, it stretches it under here. You can do maybe 10, 15, 20 on each side, go down to the other side. Don't move the shoulder, only move the neck. When I was doing that, it was getting the best stretch under here. So I'm going to continue doing that one. Okay, and the next exercise that I found, and this one's hugely important, guys. And bearing in mind in this whole video, these are things that I'm doing personally. You don't have to actually do them. You do them at your own accord. If you get injured, etc., like disclaimer, guys, it's, like it's not because of me. You chose to do them. I'm cho choosing to do them. It's a YouTube channel. This is what I'm recommending. I'm just doing my own personal research. I don't claim to be, you know, medically qualified. But what I'm doing is I'm holding my neck to brace it, and I'm going back. And I'm doing that, guys, okay? So I do it side on so you can see better. But when I'm going back, I'm getting to the point where the front of my neck now has to take over and support instead of the back of the neck. So the front of the neck goes, we're going to have to grip this, and it tenses. The whole thing goes like this. You can just feel everything tense up. And then what you do, let's say this is the top of my chin. So what I'm doing is I'm doing these slight movements, okay, like this. And I'm holding... I'm pushing it forward, I'm getting a flex, I'm getting a tense, and I'm testing, I'm testing while I'm doing it. And sometimes I hold for a couple of seconds and then I move it forward. Sometimes I do it to the side like this. So let me brace my neck. You can do it one-handed if you need.
And you might not enjoy this, guys, but I'm feeling a massive stretch all up under here in that submental zone. I can even feel that hyoid bone getting pushed backwards by the muscles, which I know will tighten everything up underneath here. And it's the best one that I've seen. It's the best one that I've felt out of all the exercises I've done. Like I said, it's a little bit dangerous because you're not supposed to put your neck back to that point. Um, but there's one thing about boxers, okay, guys? Boxers, fighters, etc. For the nature of the sport that they're doing or the nature of their occupation, boxers, UFC fighters, you know, any fighter in general, they're a handsome bunch. They're a good-looking bunch of people. And they definitely clench more, you know, because they're fighting down on that gum shield all the time. They're training a lot more often, low body fat, etc. So they're, you know, they're sweating a lot more often, cleaner skin. But for guys that get punched in the face, they're a good-looking bunch on average, right? And they're just average men, all right? Because there's any pool of guys can go and box. There's no rule. It's not like you have to be a model in order to box. But the other thing that they're doing, they're probably one of the only group of people on planet Earth who actually actually actively train their necks you know i've seen anthony joshua led upside down on the top of his head in like a bridge and he's going like that he is actively training the front of his neck so that when he can take punches ow i'm kidding when he takes punch i hit myself a bit hard there didn't i when he takes punches all of this under here is solid it's stronger and like I said, the rest of us kind of sat at our desk. Why was using the phone? All of this has gone into flexion. It's not being used. It's loose. It's weak. It's not being used, not being activated. Whereas these boxers, they might be training their necks twice a week. You know, so Anthony Joshua has this very strong neck all around here. It's tight. It's strong. Pushes his, pushes his uh, mandible forward. You know, gives him a strong jawline. There's a lot of boxers doing this, guys, and boxers on average, like I said, are good-looking guys, so there's some more evidence towards it, but those are kind of the exercises that I would throw in with Jeff's exercises. I'm currently doing about, I'm currently doing sets of 50 on every exercise three or four times a day, depending on what I can fit in, and my aim is to get some results for you guys and show you what's happening. I've done all the orthotropics for years. I've chewed here. I've pushed the cheekbones up. I need to hollow out here a bit more, which is what I'm going to do now over the next couple of months. There's nobody here, so I don't have to talk a lot. And under here, I'm going to really train this up and strengthen it up. I'm bulking at the moment, so I'm going to have some excess body fat. But when I cut that body fat down, should have some fantastic results. But if you guys want to start with me now and have a little go and... Guys, that picture alone with all the muscles in the neck, that should tell you everything you need to know, right? So with that in mind, who wants to go on this journey with me and start strengthening these areas up? And there were Jeff's exercises, which I recommend you go and watch because he looks great. And then there's my exercises, which I've very, I've very much focused in on how to target the submental because I believe that these areas are easy. You know, you can easily do something like that and strengthen all these neck muscles. There's multiple ways to do it. But I think it's very, you know, this exercise is good, the one that Jeff was doing. But I think there's very few that actually target this submental right under here and tighten this up and get this up tight. So, you know, that was the exercise that I was doing, especially that one where you brace your neck. Honestly, the stretch all the way up here and especially this one. I can really feel that number one there, but I can really feel that straight down here. That's what you want to target. Now, these areas you can target from a lot of Jeff's exercises, but like I said, this submental straight up the middle, if you can tighten that up and get that solid, you'd at least have a two inch jawline and then the rest can follow over time. But I feel like this area can be tightened up very quickly because there's not a lot of it. It's like a small pouch that can be tightened right up. And even if you have a good jawline, it's good to stay on top of it, guys. But that's the research that I found. I hope this video has been helpful to a lot of people. If you want to learn about orthotropics, I'll leave that as the recommended video afterwards, the documentary with Mike Mew. And I'll probably include the video where I've done a kind of review of what Mike Mew said in my video, how to become a better looking man. And um, it, like Jeff said at the end of his video, right, guys, that he brings all the fingers together and makes it into a punch. Bang, that's how he gets the results. Now, I truly believe that if you do orthotropics, if you do the facial exercises, as in especially the neck, but all around the face, but especially the neck, I believe if you eat clean, you know, and you um, exercise and have low body fat, I believe that is the fist that comes together and bam. That's when you have that perfect jawline, that perfect face, 
kind of Jeremy Meeks with a solid jawline, you know, Jason Statham looking face. I believe when that is how and when it all comes together. Um, but everybody, and I mean everybody, is disregarding this neck area underneath the mandible, especially the submental. And like Mike Mew said to me, guys, and I'll leave you with this, the, the muscles influence the positions of the bones. Now, this whole area is a sheet of muscle, this whole area, and it's currently weak, like it is in everybody. We can see it's weak. We can tell it's weak. The majority of the population have weak muscles under here. You can feel it yourself. And one thing I'll say to you guys is that if you do these muscle exercises, these neck and submental exercises for one day, and you maybe do four to five sets, if you wake up the next day and, that, and you've got a real ache under here, like I did, a real pain, you know you have weak front neck muscles. It's like training your legs. If you haven't ever trained, trained butt, which a lot more guys need to do because, you know, we've all got weak butts, you will wake up the next day and you'll be in serious pain. Like everyone's in pain after leg day because the majority of people don't have strong legs. And it's the same, like, if you have weak shoulders, you train your shoulders, terrible shoulder pain for two, three days. And... Um, when your body's being tested, when it's being pushed to a limit that it's not at yet, you get physical pain, DOMS, delayed onset muscle soreness, maybe the next day, maybe the next day after that. Try it with your neck muscles. Try it with the front neck muscles. If you train them, like I said, four or five sets in a day, 50 reps on each time, you wake up the next day. If it's all aching under here, you've got your answer, okay, guys? I had that. I had that for like three, four days. I've kept training it, kept training it. I feel I can definitely see results under there. It's getting more solid. But you know me, guys, I'm going to do it for six months to a year, get some serious results and give you the feedback. But if you want to join me on this journey, more than happy to uh, kind of trade notes along the way and document it all and see how we all get on. But thank you for watching as always, guys. I'll see you soon.